leaders of the community, my dear brothers and sisters, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah number 6 of surah number 49. Surah number 49 is known as Surah Al-Hujurat. This surah has 18 verses. I recommend this surah to all of you brothers and sisters, especially those who have not gone into the meaning and tafsir of this surah, to read this surah closely, because in it we find that there are many social issues which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken about, and he has covered extensively issues which are related with our community. Today we will we will touch only one aspect of the tafsir of this ayah. And that is when you receive news and someone brings to you information, how are you supposed to go about receiving the information? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena aman, O you who believe, in ja'akum fasiq, if fasiq, comes to you to bring you binaba in, to bring you naba, yes. naba news, naba information. Remember in Surah Amma, Yatasa'alun, Surah An Naba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Amma Yatasa'aluna Anin Naba il Adhim. They are asking you about <coughs> the greatest news. Now, Naba in Arabic is singular, plural is Amba. When you watch, for example, any Arab channel, you will see they say, Al Ana Nastamiu ila Nashratil Amba. Now we are going to read news bulletin. So, Naba is news, information. Here in ayah number six, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If a Fasiq brings you Naba, news or information, Fatabayanu. You need to verify it. Why? And to suibu qawman bijahala, because least you harm to some people in ignorance, fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadimin, and afterwards you will have to repent of what you did. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if information comes to you, not just information. You need to look at the person who brings the information to you. He says, if this particular individual is a far sick, then verify the information. Why? Because if you are going to act according to what you have received as information from a far sick, then there is a danger that your action will harm some people. And then when it comes clear afterwards, you will blame yourself. Why did we do this? So as you can find from this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says clearly, in ja'akum fasiqun. If a fasiq, according to Mufassirin, they say, a person of evil nature, fasiq, the one who commits ma'asiyah, sins openly, and he doesn't care. So such a person, it brings you any information, any information, you need to verify it. Because otherwise you will cause trouble to the community and that's, that will cause problem. And then you will have to find excuses for you to ask for, sorry, forgive me, I didn't know. Allah says, no, don't go there. An evil person brings you information, verify it. He is, he is known as Farsic. So if a Farsic brings information, verify it is the conclusion of this ayah. Now, there is one subject which is known as maf'umul mukhalafa. The opposite of what the information you are told is what you need to look at it in order for you to act according. So we ask a question. What if a person brings you information and if he or she is not Farsic? An adil, just person brings you information. What can you do it? Do you need to verify it? According to the opposite understanding, 
you are not supposed to do that. Because why? He's an Adi. Two people, for example, in the beginning of the holy month of Ramadan, they say, we have witnessed, we have seen the, the crescent. They are not fasting, they are adil. You take the information and you say, Alhamdulillah, thank you, tomorrow we'll start fasting. But if you know someone is fasting, you cannot depend on his information. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verify it. The way now you can see, for example, one country announces every time, tomorrow is the beginning of the month of Ramadan. Tomorrow is Eid. People start fasting. For the day of Eid, they start celebrating Eid. And then few days after, maybe one day, two days, news comes, sorry, we made a mistake, and we will pay kafara for you. And then next year they do the same, and you do the same. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, listen, in ja'akum fasikun binaba'in fatabayyanu. If a fasik, an evil man or woman of that nature, evil, then verify the information. So here we know that information, when it comes to you, you need to look at the person who brought the information to you. Clearly, if a fasik, keep it aside. If not, then you can act according to it. So how shall we react according to the information which we receive. Now today, this can, can be one of the subjects of media, Islam and media. What does Islam say about media? Now, in terms of media, we understand the channels which are there, the radio stations and so on and so forth. The information they give us sometimes is of confusing nature. But still, we want to listen to them because why? The setting is good, the language they speak is good, the light is good, it's attractive. But the, the, the source, the essence of what they say is not there. Now according to the Holy Quran, we need to be very careful. However, on the other side, this particular ayah, our scholars, <coughs> Muslim scholars, they have taken this ayah and they have applied it in a science which is known as the science of hadith or sciences of hadith. And this is our subject today, narrators of hadith. When we talk about narrators of hadith, it is the subject is connected with science of hadith. When we talk about science or sciences of hadith, we see that Muslim scholars have done a lot, mashallah, in terms of developing this particular hadith. Number, number, a, a science, number one, sciences of hadith or ulumul hadith, it is a science which Muslims have not borrowed from anyone else. It is their development of this science. Today, non-Muslims, sometimes they find it difficult to understand it. Number two, we find that it deals with wordings. What did he say? What was said? What was said is, is very important. And who said it? And who brought to us that information in order for us to act accordingly? And it is here, the scholars of sciences of hadith or sciences of narrators of hadith, they discuss about narrators of hadith in the science which is known as ilmu rijali hadith. The science which talks about narrators of hadith. Sallallahu Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Young audience, if you don't mind, young brothers, please come forward once again. Salawat. So when we talk about science of hadith, you can see that Muslims has, have developed this science and in simple understanding, they say that any hadith, and what is hadith? Hadith means saying of a ma'asum. Any saying of Rasulullah. Any saying of Imam Amirul Mu'minin. Any saying 
of noble lady lady of light Fatima to Zahra sallallahu alaihi wasallam so any saying of masum is known as hadith hadith what they have said about either something which we have to do or not to do what they say that is hadith in any hadith we find that there are two parts which are very important one part is known as matn mim ta nun matn and the second part is known as sanad sin nun dal or also is known as isnad now when we look at one part which is matn this is the text this is the actual hadith and for isnad or sanad these are narrators of the hadith the chain of narrators of hadith so any hadith which comes to you you need to look at those two key things sometimes our scholars they remove chain of narrators because it's a long list of people and the example of hadith is the one which says an fulan an fulan an fulan an let's say masum qala it has been narrated from so so and so from so and so from the masum the masum has said so because chain of narrators for common people is a difficult thing we don't know them so they will bring just the hadith this is the hadith and in our madrasas when we teach students for example the science of hadith they, there are many many steps to teach the easiest one is when we say for example qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam the holy prophet says al wudu silahul mu'min ablution is a weapon of a believer now the hadith here is al wudu silah al mu'min wudu when you perform ablution silah is a weapon believer of a believer truly speaking when you perform wudu all the time you are in a state of wudu your mind and conscience will be pure you want to commit sin but then you remember i'm in a state of wudu salah so times comes i'm in a state of wudu you enter and you pray when you go to sleep at night you're in a state of wudu the holy prophet says it is it is as if you're going to do ibadah the whole night if you sleep with wudu it's difficult to start with however if you train yourself to be in a state of wudu it becomes easy we know the situation in the country which we live sometimes you go to bathrooms where they don't have facilities to perform wudu it becomes difficult however with training and a lot of exercises it becomes easy and our wudu mashallah you don't need one liter of water one glass is enough you can perform wudu because as per the hadith again hadith of imam jafar al-sadiq oh, yeah. 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 he says al wudu ghaslatan wa mashatan wudu is of two types of washing and two types of wiping masah so we wash our faces and we wash our hands we wipe our heads and we wipe our feet two types of washing and two types of wiping when we do tayammum because we cannot use water the places or the parts which we use to wash we wipe them those which we use to wash them we don't do anything so in terms of tayammum you are in a hospital may allah give us better health inshallah yeah. you are in hospital or something has happened you cannot use water you strike your feet your your your, your arms on the sand clean and you wipe this particular area only of your face not the whole face this area only you do massage that's it and then you wipe your right uh hand if we can call it from here up to the toe to the, to the fingers and the left side that's it this is tayammu you are ready to pray so look at the hikmah the wisdom of the six imam he says wudu is mas ghaslatan wa mashatan wudu consists of two types of washing and two types of wiping 
other schools of thought, they find it difficult to understand. Why? Because they wash their faces, they wash their hands, they wash their heads, they wash their feet. And when it comes for the issue of tayammu, of course they do according to what the Holy Quran says, you wipe your part of your face and part of your hands. As per the hadith of the sixth imam, the hadith is this, Al-wudu'u ghaslatani wa mashatan. Now, when we talk about the hadith itself, this is what we call it hadith. And the narrators of hadith, we call it sanad or isnad. I know it may be, it may be seen as if it's a bit, a bit difficult <laughs> subject. But no, don't worry. Followers of Ahlul Bayt, Ahlul Bayt in Nubuat al Atar, Ahlul Bayt of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's easy to understand hadith. Easy to understand narrators of hadith. Why? Let us try. An Jabir ibn Abdullah al Ansari an Fatima Tazar. That is chain of narrators. Qala. So this is a story now. Lady Fatima talks about the hadith. And Jabir, it has been narrated from Jabir bin Abdullah al Ansar. And Fatima al Zahra from the Lady Fatima. Now, chain of narrators, you look at the two, you find that there's no any problem. And the, it, the hadith continues. Until the end. Now, the hadith, when you look at it, sometimes it may be long, like Hadith Al Kisa. And sometimes it can be very short. Al Wudu Silah Ul Mu'min. Wudu is a weapon of a believer. So, some a hadith which are very long, a hadith we take sometimes when we give lectures, we teach that part which we want. So here in Hadith Al-Kisa, we see narrators of Hadith is Jabir bin Abdullah Al-Ansar and Lady Fatima Zahra Salatullahi wa So the chain of narrators, this is known as Sanan or Isnan. And the Hadith is the wordings which we have seen. Now, when we look at narrators of Hadith, if they are sound, Meaning, they do not lie, they did not make any mistake. That category of the people will make the hadith to be known as hadith sahih. Hadith sahih means sound hadith. You can take it, you can act on it without any problem. However, when we look at many a hadith outside there, we see that there is hadith da'if. Da'if means what? Weak. Why the hadith is known as weak? Because chain of narrators are people which you cannot trust. Or there are other issues as we are going to mention. And there are some hadith which are fabricated hadith. Fabricate, what do you mean? The Holy Prophet didn't say it. A'imma alayhi salam did not say it. People decided to say what they decided to say. Let me tell you one, which is very fabricated hadith. Some of our, the, the, uh, from our brothers, we find from some of their books, they say alcohol was allowed before it was banned in the big ban before uh, in the beginning of Islam. Alcohol drinking was allowed, and then the ayah came to forbid Muslims not to drink alcohol. The first ayah says that. Uh, you can drink alcohol, but when you come for the time of Salah, stop. The second one says, no, that drinking alcohol and other things, this is, this is the act of shaitan. Keep it away. Keep yourself away from them. Now, came narrators of hadith, fabricators of hadith. What did they do? They say this ayah was revealed when group of people were drinking alcohol and they went to the masjid and they did not know what they were saying and they said words which showed shirk, meaning they were worshipping Allah. You know who they say that? The hadith, the ayah, it was revealed to? 
Imam Amirul Mu'minin sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah subhanahu That Amirul Mu'minin was drinking alcohol. Astaghfirullah. Wallahi astaghfirullah astaghfirullah. He was drinking and the group of companions and uh, the time for salah came, they went to pray and they did not know what they were saying. But we know afterwards we came to know that the machine, the industry of producing this kind of a hadith was Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan. And those who were with him, they were the ones because why? They did not like Amir al -Mumini. So you have to poke <coughs> holes in his life in order for you to qualify when you fight against him. Isn't it? There is a proverb which says, if you want to kill your dog, what do you do? You give it a bad name. Because to kill a dog, you will cause trouble. How can you kill a dog? But if you want to kill a dog, the way they say in proverb, yeah, give it a bad name. This dog is mad. <coughs> yeah, mad dog. So when you kill, say, it's a mad dog. People will say, okay, no problem. The dog used to attack people. You give it a bad name. Muawiyah, this was his policy. We will poke holes in the life of Abba al Hassan in order for people not to follow him. But Wayam Kuruna, Wayam Kurullah, Wallahu Khairul Makirin. They plan, and Allah has his own plans. And Allah is the best of the planets. Muawiyah used to drink alcohol, he himself. Until one day some companions came and they said, Muawiyah, what are you doing? He said, uh, what, what do you mean? He said, we see it's in front of you. We left many years ago. We don't, we don't drink again. He said, no, 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 this is not the, the one which we used to, to drink. This is, this is something new. But he used to drink. You can find these in the books of uh, a hadith. <laughs> now, when we talk about chain, chain of narrators, we find that within them you find hadith which is sahih, and within them you, fi you find that hadith which is weak. And the chain of narrators are very important for us in order for us to know whether the hadith is sound, whether the hadith is fabricated, whether the hadith is weak, and so on and so forth. The hadith which is sound, you take, you act according to it without any problem. The eighth Imam, Ali bin Musa Ridha, Salawat Allah Alaihi Wasallam. He was summoned by Ma'amun. Ma'amun wanted the eighth Imam to go to Khorasan. Why? Because Shia of Amirul Mu'mineen, they revolted. They didn't want Ma'amun to stay in power. So he thought, what can I do? Let me bring one of the Ahlul Bayt to work with me in order for people to say, okay, it's fine now, we have someone from Ahlul Bayt. And that's why he summoned the eighth Imam. Imam Alayhisam did not want to go, but he said, whether you like it or not, you will have to come. So Imam decided to go. He started his journey until when he reached Nishapur, or Nishapur. When he was there, scholars of Hadith, came to learn that the eighth Imam is in town. They went to him and they said, Ya Ibn Rasulillah, we have never had hadith from someone who is from the family of Rasulullah. We want to hear hadith from you because you are here. Please narrate even at least one hadith to us. Imam alayhi salam stood up and he was looking at the people. Many people were there, many, many, in thousands. Then Imam st stood up and when he started talking, each and everyone was quiet listening to the eighth Imam. And he started by saying that Sami'itu an Abi, I have heard from my father. Who is his father? Seventh Imam. From that he had heard, he had heard the hadith from his father. Six Imam. From his father. Fifth Imam, from his father, fourth Imam, from his father, third Imam, from his father, Amirul Mu'mineen, from Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam, from Jibra'il, 
from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah says kalima tu la ilaha illa Allah hisni wa man dakhala hisni amina min adhab kalima tu la ilaha illa Allah anyone who says la ilaha illa Allah has entered my fortress la la ilaha illa Allah hisni when you say la ilaha illa Allah this is my fortress وَمَنْ دَخَلَ عَنْ حِسْنِي And anyone who enters into my fortress, أَمِنَ مِنْ عَذَابِهِ He will be kept away from my punishment. And then Imam paused. According to narration, he says, وَلَكِنْ بِشَرْطِهَا وَشُرُوطِهَا وَأَنَا مِنْ شُرُوطِهَا But لا إله إلا الله has got conditions. And I am one of the conditions of لا إله إلا الله. People started saying takbir and saying all the words, chanting, which nobody had that kind of chanting before. Now you look at this hadith. This is known as hadithu silsilatu dhahabiyya. What is dhahab in Arabic? Gold. Silsila, chain. Hadith of the golden chain, which was narrated by the eighth imam. Why do they call it hadithu silsila dhahabiyya? Because the narrators are all ma'asumin from Rasulullah, up to Rasulullah, from Jibra'il, from Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jala. This kind of hadith you take, you act without any problem about it. Now, when we talk about sanad and texts or matin of the hadith, then we come to find this hadith of the eighth imam. Now, when we look at the hadith, the way I say that there are many categories of people, we find from the Mu'allim, the best student of Rasulullah, Imam Amirul Mu'mineen, Asadullah al-Ghalib, Ghalib, Kulli Ghalib, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Salawat Allah, Ali Masih, Ali Masih, In Nahjul Balagha, for those who do research, go to Nahjul Balagha. Salmon number 2 and 208. 208, it could be 207 or 2089, uh, uh, according to the publishing. But from what I quoted is 208. It says, وَمِنْ كَلَامِهِ And from what he has said, وَقَدْ سَأَلَهُ عَنْ أَحَادِيثِ الْبِدَعْ وَعَمَّ فِي أَيْدِ النَّاسِ مِنْ إِغْتِلَافِ الْخَبَرْ فَقَالَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ This is about... Someone came to him and he said, Ya Amir al muminin can you teach us or say something about a hadith and bid'ah and what is in the hands of people? Because we see ikhtilaf, we see uh, information which is of conflicting. So can you tell us something about hadith? Listen to Amir al muminin If we talk about science of hadith, go to this lecture or Salmon number 208 or 207. From Nahjul Balagh, he said, "Inna fi aydin nasi haqan, wa batilan, wa sidqan, wa kibba." What you see in the hands of people, there are some ahadith which are true ahadith. Others, no, they are not. Sidqan, they are those which are sahih, and they are those which are fabricated. And then he went deeper. He said, "There are those which are nasihan and mansuhan." وَعَامًا وَخَاصًا وَمُحْكَمًا وَمُتَشَابِهًا وَحِفْظًا وَوَهْمًا They are those which are abrogated and those which are abrogating. They are those which are specific and they are those which are general. And they are those which are easy to understand and they are those which are difficult to understand. And he says, وَلَقَدْ كُذِّبَ عَلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ عَلَى عَهْدِ People fabricated hadith at the time of the Holy Prophet when he was alive. Until the Holy Prophet said, لَقَدْ كَثُرَ 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 الْكَذَّابِ Many liars are around now. مَنْ كَذَّبَ عَلَيَّ مُتَعَمِّدًا فَلْيَتَبَوَّقْ مَقْعَدَهُ مِنَ النَّارِ Anyone who lies, and he said that something which I have said, and I did not say, he should prepare his abode, Jahannam. So if you say something which he didn't say, Jahannam. And that's why, you remember in the month of Ramadan, our scholars say, if you are fasting and you ascribe lies to the Rasulullah, 
Oh Allah, you are fasting is batil. And the Holy Prophet said, these liars will be many. I ask a question. Let us connect this subject tonight with what we are going to hear tonight. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, when you talk to people who are not the followers of Ahlul Bayt, why they don't know him? You talk to people who say, you know Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas? What do they say? And who is he? You don't know Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas? No, we don't know Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. Why? We have never heard about him. Why? It's because the narrators of Hadith, they did not want to mention the name Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. So the, the chain of narrators and the Hadith and the science of Hadith is very important for us to know. Then Imam Amir al muminin said, what you have among the Hadith, there are four categories of Hadith. Number one, the Hadith which has been narrated by a Munafiq. Munafiq, hypocrite, has narrated Hadith. Number two, he says hadith which was narrated by a mu'min, believer, however, he did not memorize it properly. And he thought that the Holy Prophet said this. And he did not want to lie. His problem, he didn't memorize it properly. The third category of hadith, he says, a person who has heard from the Holy Prophet, the Holy Prophet commanded Muslims to do something, he memorized that. But then the Holy Prophet changed the ruling. <coughs> when the change happened, he was not there. So he didn't know about the second part. And the fourth one is the one who did not lie. He had the hadith correctly. He memorized it properly. And he came to narrate the hadith exactly the way the Holy Prophet has said. And it is here he said, these people, the first one, if you know that the hadith is from a munafiq, will you narrate that hadith? The answer is no. From the second person, the one who had the hadith, but he didn't memorize it properly. He said he himself, if he would know that I did not memorize it properly, he would not narrate it to people. And the third person, he says, because he didn't hear two parts, he had only one part, the second part he didn't have, he didn't hear it. He says even this one would reject to narrate the hadith because he knows that, well, I, did, I didn't get it completely. But the fourth one, he says, this is the one which you take from him. And he said, I have had all the hadith correctly and I have narrated the way I have had. And then he said, not every sahaba wa laysa kullu ashabi Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Allah wa sallam Man kana yas'aluhu wa yastafhimu He says, not every companion of Rasulullah used to ask Rasulullah about hadith. He said, sometimes some companions, they loved and they waited for a Arabi a Bedouin person to come to talk to Rasulullah in order for them to learn a lesson. He said not everyone was listening to the hadith. So it is here according to Imam alayhi salam, he says we need to be careful about the uh, science and the issue of narrating hadith. On, basis, on this basis we find that our scholars have done major works of hadith because of the time we'll just mention them quickly. We have a book of hadith which is known as Al-Kafi, of Alama al kulain Another book of hadith we know is known as Al-Istibsar and At-Tahadib by Sheikh Tusi. Sheikh Tusi is the author of these two books, Al-Istibsar and At-Tahadib. <coughs> and the, third, the fourth one is Man La Yahdurhu al faqih This Man La Yahdurhu al faqih is by Sheikh Saduk ibn Babawayhi. He compiled the hadith and he said, well, I look at the people, I know that they don't understand this science properly, let me make it easy. He said, sometimes you come to the issues and you don't have a maulana, you don't have a scholar, you don't have an alim, let me make a book. If you refer to it, it will help you. Man la al faqih. It's like when, you, you know, the, some of the books which are known as, where there is no a doctor. What shall you, shall you do if there is no a doctor? Take this book, try to treat yourself. Here he said, Man la yahduruhu al-faqih. If the faqih, the scholar is not there. 
and you want to know the rulings, what can you do? Go to this book. These are four major books of hadith. When we refer to them, then we get, of course, good understanding of the hadith. However, our scholars, all of them, they have said one thing which is very important. These books of a hadith are not known as sahih. They, know, they are not known as the sahih books of Shia. So for this reason, Shias do not have any book which is known as sahih al-kafi, sahih al-istibsar, sahih al-tahdib, sahih man la yahdhuru al -faqih. They have kutub which are known as books al-arba'a. Our other brothers, they have Sahih Muslim, Sahih Al-Bukhari, Sunan Ibn Majah, Sunan Al-Nasai, Sunan Al-Tirmidhi, and Sunan Abi Dawud. Now, these six books, they call them Sihah, meaning any hadith you find, especially in Sahih Al-Bukhari, is Sahih. And there are people who are ready to fight. That if you find any hadith there, take it. It's Asahu Kitab in Ba'd Al-Quran. It is the correct book, authentic book after the Holy Quran. But in this Sahih Bukhari, you count how many ahadith have been narrated from Amirul Mu'mineen, they are less than 40. You look at other people who narrated hadith, who became Muslims just two years before the death of the Holy Prophet, more than 500. Now you ask yourself a question. Amir al-Mu'mineen was in Mecca praying salah with Rasulullah. He started narrating a hadith from that time. Why we don't see this a hadith? What's the issue? And that's why Sayyid al-Khuwi rahmatullahi alayhi. He said, I need to work on this science of hadith. I need to know the chain of narrators properly. And he was a master of this science. You ask him any name of narrator of hadith, he will tell you the biography as if he lived with him. Why? Because he wanted to qualify the hadith of uh, Ahlul Bayt alayhi musalam. By the way, if you are to talk to our brothers, Ahlul Sunnah, you ask them, what did the Holy Prophet leave behind? What is the answer normally they say? He left two things. What are those? Quran and Sunnah. You talk to a Shia brother, sister, what did the Holy Prophet leave behind? Quran and Ahlul Bayt. These, according to narrators of hadith, they have done something. You look at the, the hadith which says the Holy Prophet left Quran and Sunnah. This hadith has been mentioned by one scholar. One scholar, Malik, in his book al Muwatta. The hadith which says the Holy Prophet left Quran and Ahlul Bayt is known as Mutawatir. Meaning, many people have narrated this hadith. Now, what's wrong now? Why are we taking the hadith which is not authentic and it's not even Mutawatir? We make it as Mutawatir, meaning that many people have narrated it. And it is here, I saw, it is, I, I saw that it is my duty to convey this message to you, brothers and sisters, in order for us to ask a question, Karbala, it happened 50 years back, just 50 years after the death of the Holy Prophet. 50 years, many people were alive. Because the Holy Prophet died in the year 11, A.H. Imam Abi Abdullah al Hussein his Shahada was in the 61 A.H. Just 50 years, many things were changed. Why? Because of this science of Hadith and the fabricators of Hadith because of many factors which they took in order for them to, be, to, to either fabricate Hadith. One of the factors which they did is a political factor. Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan. May Allah show him his place. Muawiyah used to target the narrators of Hadith who are known as Shia. If you are Shia, you narrate Hadith at the time of Muawiyah, you are exiled. Some of them killed. Some of them, if he wanted to show mercy, cut their salaries. Don't pay them. Until people were terrified to mention the name Ali. Well, you know what they used to do? They discuss any hadith, they say, it has been narrated from Sheikh. <coughs> that Sheikh has said this and that. 
You go to this majlis you hear. It has been narrated from Sheikh. That majlis from Sheikh, from Sheikh, until people said, who is this Sheikh? So among themselves they said, this was Ali bin Abi Talib. The Sheikh is Ali bin Abi Talib. Why? Because of terror which he used to show to the narrators of Hadith. You are not supposed to mention anything. So do you think that Karbala would be known the way you followers of Ahlul Bayt, you know it? And it is here, Allah, when we look at the life of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, and you come to see what happened in Karbala, and then you talk to people, you ask them, do you know about Abu al-Fadl? They said, we don't know. And we need to honor Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. Imam Amir al muminin after the death of Fatima to Zahra, he married one day. And then one day he talked to, Abul, uh, to his brother Akil. He said, Akil, my brother, I want you to find me a woman to marry. In order for me, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me children, the children will come and be protectors of Islam. Akil said, give me a few days. And he was looking because he, he knew all the clans, the tribes in Arabia. Until he went to the house which Fatima Al-Kilabiya used to live there. Akil came to Amir al-Muminin and he said, yes, there is a woman whose name is Fatima. You, we can go and marry them. He said, okay, you go do everything. I want to marry. Akil went, talked to the family. The fa father, when, when he heard that Amirul Mu'minin, Ali is coming to marry from your house, he couldn't believe his ears. He said, Ali, to my house? I don't know what's happening. He said, yeah, this is it. Fatima al-Kilabiya saw in a dream that the moon landed in their house and she narrated this to the father. Father, last night I slept, I saw the moon landing in our house. Moon meaning it's a good omen. So father said, inshallah khair. So a few days later, Akil came to propose from the house. And then afterwards, Imam Amirul Muminin married this lady, Fatima. Fatima came, house, uh, came home to Imam Amirul Muminin. Number one of the conditions, he said, Ya Ali, Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, I want you, please, not to call me Fatima. Imam Amir al-Mu'min said, why? She said, because I know Al-Hasan, Wal-Hussein, Wazaina, Wa Umm Kulthum, when they hear the name Fatima, you call me Fatima, they will always be crying because they will remember the mother Fatima. Please don't call me Fatima. Imam Amir al-Muminin alayhi salam decided to call her Ummul Banin. Ummul Banin at that time did not have any children. In Arabic language, Banin means sons. The mother of sons. So this was the dua from Amir al-Muminin, that you will have sons. And yes, she came to have four sons. And all these sons, Ummul Banin, prepared them for Karbala. And the oldest one was Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. His name is Abbas. But when he grew up and he married, he had a son by the name Al-Fadl. And that's why he's known as Abu al-Fadl. His name is Abbas. Now, as we understand, Ummul Banin always wanted the relationship between Al Abbas and Imam Abi Abdullah Al Hussein alayhi salam to be a strong, strong relationship. As we understand, a time came now Imam Abi Abdullah had to leave Medina to go for Karbala. Now, who is there? Abu Al Fadl Al Abbas. Alhamdulillah, he was gifted the body and he was a hero and he, he didn't have any fear. This is like you see Imam Amirul Mu'minin in another shape and form. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas accompanied Imam Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam and he was the flag bearer, <coughs> Alamdar. Why? Because he would never be terrified by anything or anyone. And he was ready to do anything. They went to Karbala. Imam Abi Abdullah, whatever he wanted to do, he would call him, we want to do this. You do it. Always, 
He doesn't call Imam Hussein as my brother. Why? Out of honor and respect, he says, you are my Imam. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, we go to the day of Ashura. The day of Ashura, times come. Everyone goes to fight. Most of them are killed. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas comes to Imam alayhi salam. He says, Ya Aba Abdullah, give me permission. I want to go. I can fight. I can finish these people. He says, no, you wait. Your turn will come. Why? He says, well, there is a task which you will do, but now just bear a moment. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas would wait. Why? Because he shows respect to the Imam of his time. Until the time comes, then Imam Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam says, My brother, the thirst, Al Atash, Al Atash is killing each and every one in the tent. I give you permission and order go fetch water from the river Euphrates. The river is surrounded by the enemies. Abu al Fadl al Abbas says, Yes, I will go, Sama'an wa ta'a. I listen to you and I will go. He fights against the enemies until he reaches the river Euphrates. He fills the container with water and then he says, let me drink the water. He touches the water, it's so cool. Under the scorched sun of Karbala, he wants to drink, he remembers Abba Abdullah. He says, oh nafs, oh my soul, how can you drink cool water while Abba Abdullah today, the third day, doesn't have any water? It was here, he throws the water away, then he comes back. In the middle of the way, he fights with the enemies, one targets him, he chopped his right hand. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas carries the water with the left one and he said, Wallahi, if you chop my right hand, I will defend my Imam and my Deen. He continues with the water. I ask you, Mu'mineen, we have heard this story many times. How Wallahi did Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas manage to carry the water with the left if the right was, was chopped off. That is him he had to defend Abba Abdullah. He goes, they target the left and they chopped it off. Now he doesn't have both hands. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas carries the water with his teeth. How did he manage, subhanallah? He goes until Umar bin Sa'd al-Lain says, O oh, archers, Make sure the water doesn't reach the camp of Abba Abdullah. They targeted the container and he lost the water. And then they targeted his eye and they hit him with an iron rod. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas now is about to fall on the ground. Wallahi Muminin, I ask you, dear brothers and sisters, when you want to fall, when you want to fall, you can fall and you put your hands on the ground. How did Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas manage to fall on the ground without hands? It is here, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. While he was on the ground, he says, As-salamu alayka ya Abu Abdullah. As-salamu alayka ya Abu Abdullah. Peace be upon you, Abu Abdullah. Imam Abu Abdullah looks on the ground. He sees Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. He goes there. He fights against the enemies. And then he reaches Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. The arrow is on his eye. Then he says, who is coming closer to finish me without seeing my Habibi Abi Abdullah? <laughs> Imam Hussein alayhi salam says, no, my brother, it's me. He says, okay, ya Abba Abdullah, please don't take me back to the tent. He said, no, I have to take you there. Why you don't want to go there? He says, because I promised Sakina that I'll take water to them. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas is on the ground, he's been injured, he can't do anything, then he is breathing his last, and he passes away as shaheed inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Imam Abi Abdullah looks at the tent, he looks left, right, front, back, he doesn't see anyone to help him, he says, Allah. 
الان ان كسر ظهري it is now my backbone has been broken it is now i don't have any plan هل من ناصر Is there any helper to help me? Why? Because our family is not there. <laughs> Imam alayhi salam tries to go back to the tent. Sakina comes and says, Oh, Abba, oh, my beloved father, did our family must bring us water? There was no any water. After Karbala, Sayyida Zainab goes back to the, to the city of Medina. When Sayyida Zainab meets with Zaid, uh, with the Ummul um Banin, then Sayyida Zainab says, O oh, Ummul Banin, may Allah have mercy on your soul. Why? He says, because your son, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, is Shaheed. Ummul Fadl says, no, tell me about my Habib, Abi Abdullah al Hussein. He says, may Allah reward you, Jafar is gone. Abdullah is gone. All your sons, they are not there. You are no longer Umul Banin. Umul Banin says, Oh, Sayyida Zaina, please tell me what happened until Aba Abdullah attained his shahada. Then Sayyida Zainab said, Because he didn't have his hands. Inna billahi wa inna ilayhi wa jibu. وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله ما تنفسك